Okay, so tonalism, uh, diatonic intonation and microtonal intonation. Diatonic intonation uh, means 12 semitones per octave. You have either just intonation or 12 tone equal to, we call it 12 tet, 12 tone equal temperament. Okay? Microtonal intonation, and really we have to move fast now, this is really uh, too much. Microtonal intonation, now this is my own, from my own observations, my own experience, I would personally divide microtonal intonation into two categories. One is, it's the same, same divisions as you have with the other, one is modern mathematical derived systems of microtonal intonation, which means this is a 12, 12 tet, 12 tone equal temperament. Well, what about 19? 12 tone intonation, what about 34? So there are a lot of clever musicians these days who are taking guitars, for example, and they're making different divisions, like, like more divisions, like, like uh, 19, 17, 31, 34, and, and they'll take guitars and they'll fret them according to equal temperament. And because like what happens with those systems, like 31, 34, I'll, you'll get a lot of the 12 notes, which are really similar, and then you get a bunch of extra notes, so what they've basically done is they've again mathematically derived different forms of equal temperament. <coughs> okay? So again, this is a mathematical system. It's also equal, and it doesn't really allow for a kind of twisting, twisting notes, you know, falling notes and shifting notes. So, so that's... Again, it can be useful, right? It can be useful. You could, I'm not saying you can't make good music with that, you know, especially if you're making horror movies. Mm. That's a joke, but not really. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean like, like a lot of <laughs> micro. I mean, if you want to, if you want to make make a living making soundtracks for horror movies, then microtonalism is for you. I mean, you know, this modern, this mathematical microtonalism is you can get some really frightening, <laughs> frightening music, right? It's just like whoa, these. And, and these tones, they're, they're, they're frightening almost. It's, just, it's, it's, it's almost like it's so, like we feel it on a deep level. It's unknown. It's also twisted, you know. And we feel that. When we hear just intonation, when we hear some music played with pure intonation, we just, we just relax. It's like in the meadows with the butterflies. And we just feel that. But when you hear this twisted, uh, you know, there's something really deep in us that, that we, we, we get scared. When we hear this, but my big objection, if you have a, like musicians who are making music with with this with this mathematical systems of you know, if that's all they do, and you have, you just have to sit through a whole concert of it, it's too heavy. But wow, if if you can really mix, you know, like say you've got a piece and then, and you can play something in pure intonation, and then just for a moment jump into something which is like to shift, and you can have a very dynamic, very powerful like really contrast to use these elements. You can really create something new and exciting. But don't sit there all night, you know? Don't play these, these, these incredible microtones all night. And, and, I mean, that's my opinion, right? It's just like toxic almost. So, microtonal intonation, again, the, the two ways I would break that down would be modern mathematically derived systems. And, or, traditional, organically evolved systems. Again, traditionally, organically evolved systems. Which means the Makam system, for example, it's traditional, it was organically evolved, like over time, okay? So, and, and just, just to give you a quick, play a couple of notes of, uh, I didn't have time to do, but, but uh, in uh, like, um, like oh, like a very common like. Does this sound, sound Arabic? You might not have heard a lot of Arabic music, right? 
so yeah, you might not get that. But but anyways, organically derived. I mean, like like there's one scale which we'll get into in the second half. I'll teach you this scale. There's one scale called the Rust scale, which it's so weird, and you have to ask yourself, well, well how did how did it come to be? Because like most of the macombs, just with that one Rust scale, you can derive most of the major macombs. And you can see, and my point is, you can see how it has evolved. They started with something. Now, now it's like, just to give you, like if you use the 12th tone and you have a second note, you have a flat second. Flat third, flat second. Natural second would be. Okay, so you need two seconds here, right? Flat second, natural second. So we need a lot of distance in between there. So why don't we experiment and try to play something in between those two notes, you see? Now hear that? That's somewhere in between, it's like a quarter tone. Now that is a very common, very common note in the Macomb system. Prove this, but but I sort of think that maybe because that one scale is like, and you know, it's, it's kind of like if you look at the, if you imagine these guys back in the desert, you know, like uh, a thousand years ago, and they're jamming away, they got some simple maybe two string instrument, maybe one string, and they're probably just like they're not really maybe this is my theory, it may be wrong, but I think they'll be jamming away when they're around the campfire, you know, and they'll be oh yeah. They probably two fingers in. because you know they, they were probably doing like that maybe they would just come to them because if, if this is the kind of this this is really these three notes <laughs> the, the middle one is a microtone this is a third this is a this is a microtonal second this is a tonic okay now I just sort of imagine that these guys would be having some simple instruments and they would probably oh, 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 oh. Probably just be their fingers would probably fall in that position because if you play a flat second, right, you really have to kind of to get it correct, you have to kind of go a little bit down, you know, and and, and then the natural second, your fingers it's kind of squished that way, right? So it's like to play these, 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 these notes requires a little bit of thinking, <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to kind of. Whereas, whereas it seems like it would come like to a very kind of primitive guy jamming down the campfire. They would probably be and it sounds cool. So they it's just my theory that they probably just started jamming like that as as the origins of that music on those three notes, you know, because that's still existing, with those folk music, those notes. And, and it, it seemed to me that the scale was derived from that. And then over time it developed and, and they put that, they, they started that and they moved that, they modulated this tetrachord into different spots and then they, and they thought, hey, that's a scale. Oh, we can, you know, and they started getting new ideas. Oh, we can have the scale, but we can use the same scale with a different tonic and get like a modal effect. And they started evolving it. And of course, uh, as what all musicians do over time, they start taking new tricks to impress more and they start evolving it. So you end up with this, this very sophisticated Macom system. Because it's like the Macom system, the logic in there, it's not like it was just like, oh, it's just going to happen. It, it, it's, it's a whole mixture of these 
naturally, organically kind of no patterns which just happened. And then clever musicians theorized that, and then they again used that theorized, they taught that in schools, they taught this theorized version, and then that also started evolving organically, and then it changed it, and then they theorized again, and then you had the Ottoman Empire, and that divided, and the Turks wanted to make it more like Western, and the Egyptians wanted to make it a little bit more, they wanted to rebel against, like the Turk microtones went more Western, you know, after the Ottoman Empire. The Egyptians, the Arabs wanted to make really Arab, so they, they, they made the microtones a little bit more microtonal, right? You know, so there's all these elements, which basically means it's, it's an evolution, but it, it's, it's organic. And I'm not saying that, 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 that the 31, 12, uh, 31 uh, equal, uh, equal temperament is not organic also. I mean, everything is finally organic, right? You know? But you know what I'm trying to say, right? Man-made. Man-made, yeah. I mean, finally everything's man-made. But I mean, there are, there are gray areas. This is not all black and white. There's a lot of gray areas. So I'm just, for the sake of simplification, we're just like uh, just trying to explain it in terms of black and white. Okay, so we finally got through the first uh, half of the page. Okay, let me get through it. Just intonation versus 12... Okay, we did that. What, what, why would you want to have just intonation as opposed to 12 tone equal temperament? Well, just intonation's in tune. It sounds in tune. It feels good also. 12 tone, 12 ten is out of tune. But the advantage is you can modulate. You can also use an electronic tuner, and you're always, you know, it's easier, right? You know, you can modulate, you can have harmony, you can, you can do crazy modulations. And I have to say that, 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 like, look at jazz, bebop jazz, for example. Yeah. Bebop jazz, I mean, what an incredible art form. It's totally, it's taken, bebop jazz has taken the 12 tone, 12 tet, and milked it, squeezed it for every bit of creative juice. I mean, they, it's this crazy. But what is beautiful about, I mean, what, what they do with, with bebop jazz, for example, is, is they don't play, you know, like these, 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 these chords, which like these standard country chords. They just like show like equal temperament is horrible. This is like placard, you know, like we're out of tune. We don't know the road again, you know, like, uh, but jazz, they, they're more chords like these kind of chords, they, you know, these kind of chords, they never hit you on the head with, with a major third. They're all based on like a stacks, stacks of fourths, perfect fourths, sharp fourths. Mostly these are sharp. Those are the intervals which are pretty good in equal temperament. They never play them in jazz. So jazz, you know, they didn't do that consciously, but I'm sure it was, it was an unconscious thing that they played the intervals which sound good in 12-tone equal temperament. So, and then they milked it. I mean, like, that's another whole topic. I mean, jazz, I mean, so what I'm saying is that, is that, is that I'm not, like, angry that 12-tone, that, that, uh, 12-tone 12 12 exists, because some great things have come out of it. But what I don't like is how... The organic systems, like, you know, they start using harmoniums with Indian vocal concerts, you know, harmoniums. It's like a keyboard instrument, 12 tone. And then you've got this Indian classical music, which is like a raga, if you don't have the... Indian classical music is based on just intonation. They don't use that much microtones, like the Macomb system, like I demonstrated. They more, it's more like a just intonation. So if you have a vocal concert, and, and, and you, it's a, normally you did a company with sarangi, it's a bowed instrument, right? But they accompany that nowadays more with a harmonium. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's just like totally... So that's just an example, which I really, I really am against that. I really, that should be, you know, we should go out and protest. I'm oh, sorry. Um, let's uh, go on here. Uh, Okay, so what are the advantages? The advantages, hopefully that's understood, that 12 tet has got advantages. You know, you have this equal, equals, you know. There are advantages to that, there are advantages to just intonation is into. Okay, uh, yeah, just intonation is 
is created and tuned according to, to, to the overtone series. The problem with just intonations is that the semitones, the semitones are not equally distanced. That means that when you play just intonation and you shift into a different key, you're out of tune. You can't shift in, you know, once you're tuned up into one key in just intonation, you can't shift into another key, you'll be out of tune. One page, okay. Twelfth note equal temperament, yeah, okay. It's a compromise, okay? It is a compromise. You have to ask yourself, as a musician, as a human, do you want to compromise in your life? Well, okay, we all have to compromise somewhere, but it, it's a compromise. It's a compromise. Okay, now, now let's compare. I think we, we actually did all this on it. We just didn't do it according to the sheet. Let's compare uh, modern... Uh, Okay, now I don't want to go too fast now suddenly. Like I actually explained all of this. Yeah, actually. So, modern uh, question. So, the compromise, you wouldn't have this vertical music without this compromise, is that right? Yeah. 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 But as we said, uh, it didn't just happen overnight. It started with, you know, the way... Okay, let's just talk about European music. How did European music start? European music started with, with the Gregorian chant, you know, like, like it, it originally started with, with just some chanting, obviously, you know, but, but the first kind of, you know, Gregorian chants, right, where they have these kind of these diatonic scales, which are obviously in just intonation. And they're just scales, and, and they chant in, in, in these... Have you heard Gregorian chants? Great chances. You know this. You can hear it around here. You know. uh, it's still done. I mean, so it's beautiful music. It's really. I mean, I love that stuff. So that's where it started, and then composers came along and they started composing the early music, right? Early European music, and that was also still in, uh, still in, just intonation. They were still, the early, early music was still in just intonation. But then again, slowly, slowly, the composers, you know, they wanted to get a little bit modern, so they wanted to make at least one shift, you know, from like D major to C major or whatever, or A major, just one shift, which means that the out of tune notes, as I demonstrated, the main problem is a major third. So if you want to shift into one key, only, and it's a nearby key, because some of these keys are very similar. Maybe you only have a conflict, like a really painful conflict, in maybe one note, right? So what they did is they, they, they developed a tuning, a piano or clavichord, whatever they use them, a clavichord tuning that would just take that one problematic note and modify that note only, okay? So that way, there's only one note in the whole system. Everything else is very sounding very sweet and very nice. There's only one note that they had to just kind of shift it. So it sounds pretty close in both. Not perfect in both, but pretty close. And that, was, that, would, that would have been known as the first mean tone tuning. Okay? And then the cat was out of the bag. Then it was, that was the starting, right? Once you get started, you know, then it never ends, right? You know, so that's why. So that was the first, and then, and then, and then of course, the first. I mean, can you imagine that? I remember when Jimi Hendrix came, and everyone was like, whoa, now it, like Hendrix, oh my God, look at what, what's he doing, right? Playing with the teeth and everything. Nowadays, you can click on YouTube, and you've got like thousands of like 14 year old girls who are playing like playing the Hendrix under the table, right? You know, and nobody cares. You know what I mean? Nobody cares because at the time, you always have to, oh, whenever, you ju whenever you judge any musician or any composer, you, you can't just listen and judge it. You have to put yourself back to that time. Like, to me, now Mozart sounds really kind of, oh my God, you know? I mean, I can appreciate it, but it doesn't really kick my ass, right? It doesn't really, because we've been bombarded with it and, and, and for hundreds of years. But at the time, can you imagine if, if the, when Mozart first came out, it would have been like, holy What's this, what kind of drugs is this guy taking? You know, it's, it's just like, wow. So at the time, imagine you put yourself back uh, like, like uh, a thousand years ago, and someone comes out with a composition that modulated even from one key. People would have gone, whoa, it would have been like transcendental. 
to hear that for the first time. And that gets very addictive for musicians and composers. I mean, you can like really shock people and like, you know, also become famous, even rich, you know. So, of course, the next guy went, oh my god, I was like, how do you do that? He learned that trick. And then he made, then, okay, what if we go into three different keys? Then that means we only have to modify three notes or something like that. You know, you get the idea. They kept on expanding and, and adding more keys, and they would have to modulate. So there were like hundreds of these different, over the hundreds of years, developed hundreds of different mean tone tunings. So mean tone tunings are not exactly 12 tone equal temperament. They're slight compromises that shifted, you know, certain notes, but not all. And then they eventually just said, look, this is getting too complicated. Let's, let's just flatten the whole thing. Let's just make everything 12 tone. And they did that. And there was huge protest against that. But just to be clear, when you have a, an orchestra playing classical music, you know, the violins are fretless. They can, they compromise, they, I mean, they, they compromise, they, they, they retune those notes when they play live, right? You can't do that on a piano. You cannot do that. But on a violin, if you have a whole orchestra, you know, the good musicians, they will, they're not playing, you know, they re, they, they, they try to hit those notes better more close to what's going to sound good, really. Not just, they're not out there. So, that's why Western classical music... Also bass and cello? Oh, anything fretless. Yeah. Anything fretless, you, you, you can move that around. Vocalists, you can move that around. But guitar, to a certain degree, you, you can, you know... Uh, to a certain degree, you can retune, but not really. Sort of, you can. But with, with the violins and all this, you want to play one note at a time, and, and you can re, re, retweak that. So, what is the event? Can I the advantage of... Uh, it's 25 past, I don't know when you wanted to take a break, just to warn you about 25 more. I don't know if we started a little bit late, or if we want to go off schedule or anything. I, everyone's looking a, are you guys looking a little tired now? A little bit overdosed? I need a bathroom break. Let's, let's way down the end of the hall there. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered... Basically, if we want to go... What, 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 what... So, so if, if I understand correctly, if you, let's say, you are playing some, some chord in the um, normal like Western uh, today system, like the 12... Uh, 12 10. Yeah. Uh, so, so you are playing some chord uh, that is like um, uh, stretched to the whole spectrum of, of like the, from, I don't know, to lower, lower uh, tones to higher tones. So... Uh, Within the chord? Yeah, yeah but, like, you are playing like, I don't know, C major, let's say. And you are playing like, C, like, on the piano. And the, the way how to make the chord sounds like more natural yeah. is to like like detune de the uh, individual notes so they like um, go outside of the of our um, scale to like to those like to to, it, to this just scale. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay. So so yeah. So, so it, it's like so uh, simple. It, it's a bit. They tune because of our. Oh, no, 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 retuned, not detuned, retuned. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. The, the, the fundamental thing is very simple, really. Like 12 tet has got really disgustingly sharp major thirds, and the major sixths are not that good either. But most of the major thirds are sharp, and the major sixths are also sharp. The major thirds, or the minor thirds are too low, but you, you don't really suffer too much with that. I don't know, sometimes it doesn't hurt the ears so badly. The, the minor thirds are, are low, but what really hurts the ears are, are, are the major thirds. So it's quite simple if you want to, like, uh, for example, if you're messing around with a keyboard, which is tunable, if you have a synthesizer, a synthesizer you can adjust the tuning and you want to make one particular song, or maybe you can have a patch in your keyboard that, that you can just click on this tune, and you can tune your keyboard to each song, for example. You know, say if you've got a whole set list and this song is... You could do that. You could tune your keyboard, tune the notes, so they will be more fitting for each song. And the next song, you, you, you know, and that would be good to do that. You'll sound better. Now, it's not like a big rocket science. All you've really got to do is, like, uh, uh, look at the chords you're playing, I mean, I would say it's more doing it by ear. Uh, it depends how developed your ear is. You know, that's why, you, it, you, as a musician, you want to develop your ear. You want to get away from using electronic tuners. You want to just try to get into, like, no, hearing this stuff. 
with your own ears, right? But if you don't have that sensitivity yet, I think you do. I've heard you sing. You, you have great, great uh, pitch. Your pitch is very good. So, uh, mostly if you're playing major chords, you want to take those thirds, the thirds, and lower them a little bit. Even if you just did that. Just lower your thirds a little. But, but you have to be careful again, because if there are other melodic things happening, it depends on what else is happening in the music, right? Because something else might be happening. That major third might be a, a perfect fifth of a, of a different chord. So then you're in trouble. You see? So, so you, you have to experiment. So, and so, so to make this work, you should like, take in those, um, those notes only when you are playing a certain chord. And when you go to another, you should like, retune it again. Is it? Well, I mean, it, it's hard to come up with. I mean, basically, what I would do is, 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 is within the music itself, you really want to just listen carefully and, and, and you, you just get a feeling for if, if you play it and you do the song and it sounds okay, just leave it, you know. But if there are certain, like, for example, I'll just give you an example. I, I'll even play it for you. I mean, just to give you a really good example of. of, of of, of this. The silver flute, you know the silver flute is, is, is in 12 tone? I think I'm out of tune. So, there's one melody that I was doing some concerts with uh, compositions of my own, which were composed in just intonation, of course. And I did this, these concerts with, with a silver flute player, okay? And that's when really hit me, because there's one, this melody. Do, re, mi, one, two, three. Okay, I'm just a major third, right? The melody really needed that note. That note was the main point of the melody, right? And it's a simple little thing, you know, just a, I think forget the melody. Well, it doesn't matter, but, but the point is, is that we... Would... No, I don't know, you can't really see that, but, but, but as we said, the major thirds are very low, right? And she would, you know, when I was doing the flute, is going to be the main, inst the main instrument, so I always end up doing the accompaniment, and she was playing the main melody. And I said, here's, I wrote it out for her, and it sounded like, like all these, these thirds were just so high, it just destroyed the song, it sounded just horrible. It's like, it was more like she was a... You know, it's like way up there, you know, like, and, and it was horrible. And uh, that was like, okay, that's the last time for me. And I can't believe I did that even a few, just a few years ago, you know, it was just like, that was just horrible, right? When playing these compositions that were composed in just intonation. The thing about Oriental music and, and this, this stuff is it, it, it never really struck me before how much of this music, like the Oriental music and the linear music, it, the beauty of the music absolutely depends on the intonation. It's the intonation of the notes that, that is the beauty in the, in the music. So you, if you play that music, you really have... Whereas the beauty more in uh, what, Western music or music with harmony, the beauty is more in the relationships between the chords and the melody. That's more where you're getting the beauty. You don't just like in play one note and just like, whoa, the one note, you know, like sometimes you can just, like in Indian music, you just play one note, just like, one note, and it's just like, why does that sound so good, you know, one note. You don't have that in, in, in Western music, you have more like one note and then you'll have a change, you'll, you gotta play one note and then you'll have the chord and the chord will change, and then when the chord changes, you go, oh, that's where the beauty comes, because you hear that, that shifting, right, and, and the relationship, like the, the different, you know, the modulation of the chord and the relationship between the melody and the chords, that's where you're getting that wonderful feeling in the music, not just the note. So it's a diff, you know, so it's a difference in how the, on the fundamental elements of the music, what, what makes the music sound good. So if you're thinking about practical terms, I would say just play the music and you'll know, you know, if you're sensitive, you'll know what are the painful parts. You know, why does that part of the song sound so bad? Why does that chord hurt so much, you know? And sometimes you can really isolate it down to just one or two notes and uh, just do something with that, right? Like either electronically, you know, or 
maybe eliminate that note, but sometimes when you eliminate a note, you, you lose, you know. How are we for time? Are we 11.30? Yeah, we should. Should, should we, should we? Finish now. Okay, let's, well, we did it like, um, yeah, a couple, just a couple more words. Uh, there are mixed systems, like blues, rock and roll, I demonstrated that, mixed systems. Um, examples? Examples of just intonation? Music, which is from just Indian classical music. Examples of 12 tet music. Anything played on a piano, which is tuned, standard tuning. Anything played on a piano is, is, is 12 tet. 12 tet. An example of traditional microtonal music is the makam music. Traditional microtonal music, makam, is the makam is an example of that. An example of um, a couple of examples of and this will stop. A couple of examples of modern mathematically created microtonal music. There's a guy, a friend of mine, named Neil Haverstick. Neil Haverstick, stick man, and he is, he's he's dedicated his life to to making uh, microtonal music. But he what he does is he, is he takes uh, guitars. And he frets them like a 19, 19 tet, 19 tone equal temperament or 34, and then and he makes all these wild compositions in this. So he's he's a good example of that. Um, there's a, if you're interested in that, there's a whole movement. Just Google it. You know, you have, you have um, Michael Vick, and, and there's a whole movement. If, if, if you go, if you're in, into that, like, like what I'm talking about, is is, is, is the math, modern mathematical Western microtonal music is very mathematical based. They do crazy. They're, they're, they they sometimes go crazy. I mean, they'll like they'll combine like seventeen tet with they'll okay we're gonna go up the scale in seventeen tet and then we're gonna go down the scale in thirty one tet and then we're, we'll in, superimpose that over. I mean, come on, just go write your next horror movie somewhere else. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's it, it's really no. Okay, I'm I'm, being, I'm joking. And there's some really cool stuff, and it is provocative, right? But I think if you're going to do that, it should be mixed with some just intonation. As I said before, don't just hit people over the head with this bizarre stuff all night long. They will just jump off in their bridge. Really, really, I'm not just joking. It's depressing. It's depressing us. It is. Try it. I, I guarantee you. Try it. Go listen to like modern microtonalism music for a month, every day for eight hours. You'll be jumping off the next bridge. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's depressing. Okay, so, um, but powerful also. Powerful music. It's powerful also. So, it's a tool to like, really, it's a powerful tool. But don't over, overdo it. With it. Like same with any tool. Don't overdo it. <laughs> but use it. Learn about it. Use it, you know, for sure. That's, that's the, the, the direction where music is going. Okay? So that's where things are progressing into. So use it, but use it beautifully, you know, to, to create, to, like if you use it for a while and then you go into just intonation, then you, then you make the just intonation sound even better. It's almost like if you would be stuck in some Witkowitzka for, for, for an hour and then you would suddenly go into a beautiful field with, with the yellow field. You're going to be really even happier when you're in the yellow field after you've been forced to like sit by Witkowitzka for an hour. Right? Because you are really, are really craving that release of the just intonation. So, so that's what I'm saying is, is the value, and even these, these perverted systems have value, because it's art, but how do you use it, right? All right, um, check out Stickman, HHH Stickman, and uh, Neil Haverstick, and, and, and also this new group, uh, King Gizzard, but just if you're interested in that, just Google it, and you can go down the rabbit hole. There's tons of that stuff. I, I just, myself, haven't too much, because that doesn't really excite me that much. More I'm into the modal music, makam music. So the next part, I'll show you a little bit about the makam system. And we'll, we'll just try to sing a little bit there. <laughs> 